Okay, in this second video on process analysis, we're going to look at another example. Consider a process consisting of five resources that are operated eight hours per day. The process works on three different products A, B, and C, and details are on the next slide. Demand for the three different products is as follows. Product A, 40 units per day, product B, 50 units per day, and product C, 60 units per day. And we would like to answer the following two questions. A, what is the bottleneck? And B, what is the flow rate for each flow unit, assuming that demand must be served in the mix described above. That is, for every four units of A, there are five units of B and six units of C. And here we have the detailed information on the resources, number of workers, processing times for A, B, and C. And next, I'm going to turn to my Excel spreadsheet to answer the two questions. Once again, I've already collected the information provided by the problem itself. In this table over here, uh, I include, of course, the original information like resource, number of workers, processing time for product A, B, and C. In addition, I added three columns. In D column, I would like to calculate daily capacity in minutes. Recall that in our previous video, I mentioned that there are different ways of measuring capacity. A typical one is, okay, how many units we can make per day, per hour, etc. Another way is in unit of time. In this case, that's what we're going to do. We're going to capture daily capacity in minutes. You will recall, it is because that in this case, each resource will deal with three different products, A, B, and C. And for each different product, it takes different amount of time. So it is much easier to convert everything into time units in this case, in minutes. In each column, we're going to calculate total workload. That is coming from each resource working on product A, B, and C. Once we have the uh, total workload, we can calculate implied utilization in I column. Some additional information is here. Number of working hours a day is eight and daily demand for product a is 40 units daily demand for b and c is 50 and 60 units respectively and over here i've already calculated the percentage product a accounts for about 26.67 percent of the total demand product b accounts for one third of the total demand and product C accounts for 40% of the total demand. Now let's look at our questions. Question A, what is the bottleneck? We're going to take a few steps to answer this question. Step 1, we're going to calculate the daily capacity in minutes of each resource. Let's look at resource 1 or workstation 1 first. Each worker works eight hours a day. And of course, each hour has 60 minutes. Don't forget, at workstation one, we have two workers. Therefore, the daily capacity in minutes at resource one is 960 minutes. And with the formula we created in cell D3, we can simply copy and paste to generate daily capacity in minutes for resources 2 to resources 5. Here we go. And in step 2, we are going to calculate the total workload in minutes per day of each resource. And once again, we're going to start with resource 1. Keep in mind that 
the process has to process 40 units product A, 50 units of product B, and 60 units of product C. At resource 1, it takes 5 minutes each. How are we going to calculate the total workload? I'm going to use a function in Excel called sum product. And I'm going to use absolute cell reference. What this sum product function does for us over here is that it is equal to 40 times 5 plus 50 times 5 plus 60 times 5. Return. And we get 750 minutes. Similarly, with the formula created in cell H3, uh, we can easily calculate the total workload in minutes for the other four resources even. Here we go. All right, next in step number three, we're going to calculate the implied utilization of each resource. Because that implied utilization is equal to demand rate divided by capacity. And where's our demand rate? In our case, it is nothing but the total workload. So to find implied utilization of resource 1, it is going to be equal to total workload at resource 1, 750 divided by daily capacity at resource 1, 960. And the implied utilization is equal to 78.125%. Once again, I'm going to copy and paste the formula to find the implied utilization of all the other four resources. All right. Now we're ready to identify the bottleneck, which is our step four. Well, bottleneck, simply put, is just the busiest resource or workstation in our process. Who's the busiest one? Well, this guy, resource number three, which has an implied utilization of 1.25 or 125 percent. And that is to say, if resource 3 does not work overtime, or adding extra workers to resource 3, we are not going to be able to meet the daily demand of 40 units of A, 50 units of B, and 60 units of C. But let's worry about that a little later. Uh, to conclude, question A, the bottleneck will be nothing but well, resource 3. That is the one with the highest implied utilization. Okay, let's turn to question B. What is the flow rate for each product, assuming that demand must be served in the mix described above? Essentially, we want to make sure no matter how much demand we have satisfied, a has to be 26.67%, B has to be one-third, and product C has to be 40%. All right, let's see what we can do about it. First of all, we already know that the bottleneck is resource 3, and if you take a look, resource 3 only works on product A, and it has nothing to do with product B and product C. Okay, so let's see what's going to be the flow rate. Resource 3 will spend the entire 480 minutes to produce product A. It takes 15 minutes per unit. So the flow rate of product A is going to be equal to 480 divided by 15 we get 32 units per day. That is to say, we can only produce 32 units of product A per day. And based on this, in step two, 
here's a typo let me fix it we are going to determine the percentage of demand that can be satisfied recall that we want that demand must be served in the mix described above the demand for product A is 40 but we can only process and produce 32 per day so what do we know we can only complete or satisfy 80% of the demand the flow rate of product B will be equal to okay 50 times 80% that is 40 units per day for product B and last but not the least product C 60 units but we can only satisfy 80% of them so we get 48 units per day for product C.